Photosynthesis is one of the most important processes that happens uh, in, in all of biology. Um, you, I'm sure you've probably heard of photosynthesis before, uh, all the way back from, uh, to maybe grade school. Uh, but photosynthesis it really sustains life on our planet. And it's the process in which plants, uh, or bacteria, some bacteria, take in uh, carbon dioxide, water, and sunlight. And with those three ingredients, they produce sugar, uh, which we need to be able to survive, as do other organisms, as well as oxygen. And uh, we are obviously very dependent on this process in order to be able to survive. We take in that carbon dioxide, uh, excuse me, that, that sugar. Uh, we take in that oxygen and we use those in order to be able to produce ATP through cellular respiration, uh, another process that's, that's very linked. And the two of those, photosynthesis and cell respiration combined, really produce a cycle in which carbon dioxide is used to produce sugars that then we use to release carbon dioxide. So it's a big cycle. In this investigation, in this lab today, we're going to look at uh, the process of photosynthesis happening and actually measure that process. In this investigation, in this lab today, we're going to look at uh, the process of photosynthesis happening and actually measure that process uh, using some spinach leaves that I've uh, just cut open here. Some as fresh as possible spinach leaves. Uh, it's in the middle of winter right now, and so being able to have some fresh plants from outside uh, that still have leaves is not very possible. So we're going to use uh, some store-bought spinach leaves. They work well in this lab. Um, we're also going to use, again, a veneer gas pressure, um, excuse me, carbon dioxide sensor. And this sensor, much like the gas pressure sensor that I've used in the past, uh, what it does is measures in a contained environment in this biochamber that we're going to use today. Uh, once put in here like so, it creates a sealed environment and will measure the amount of carbon dioxide inside of this chamber. And so uh, through photosynthesis, uh, one of the inputs as we discussed is carbon dioxide. And so if we measure the amount of carbon dioxide, if photosynthesis is taking place, we should be able to see the amount of carbon dioxide in a closed environment change. A few of the other items that I have today that we're going to use is a 75 watt uh, light bulb. Uh, photosynthesis requires light and so we're going to uh, uh, conduct two trials today or two conditions I should say. One with light and one in the absence of light. And then um, I also have this beaker of water and it doesn't really have any other purpose besides to help control our variables. We really want to make sure in our experiments that anything that uh, we're modifying, our independent variable, we want to ensure that only the independent variable is, is causing any change. And as we've talked about with enzymes, heat can influence enzymes and actually make them faster up to the point of denaturing. And a traditional light bulb uh, produces heat as a byproduct as well as the light. So we want to make sure that we're not causing that heat to influence our overall results. And so what we'll do today is set up our uh, our, our apparatus here, our, our, our um, uh, vials, um, so that the light actually shines through the uh, water here and what the water will do is absorb that heat, but it allows the light to pass through still. So it really works well to help us control the variables in this condition. Um, and so we'll uh, go ahead and get started here. So my first step to starting the lab today is I need to add some of the spinach to my biochamber. And today we're going to use six grams of spinach. So I'm going to measure that out uh, on our scale here. Okay, so I've got uh, spinach in our biochamber here. And uh, next what I'll do is insert the gas, uh, the carbon dioxide gas sensor uh, into the veneer, uh, into the biochamber, into the biochamber here. And um, on my computer, uh, I'm going to be using the veneer program Logger Pro uh, in order to be able to collect the data. So I've got that opened up already. And the uh, software is going to collect data for a span of 10 minutes and uh, it's going to take 15 samples every minute. So it's going to take a carbon dioxide measurement every 15 seconds and it'll do that for the duration of 10 minutes. Um, 
Before I'm able to start co uh, collecting data though, I need to let this sit for three minutes in order for the gas to stabilize. Um, obviously the bio chamber has been open. Now that I've sealed it, I want it to stabilize. So I'm gonna let it for, sit for three minutes um, while I'm getting other things set up and we'll come back to it in just a moment. Um, my next step is I wanna make sure that my bio chamber is as close as possible uh, to the beaker of water uh, in order to trap that heat. I also am gonna use some tin foil today and make a sort of shield to uh, protect this veneer probe like so uh, to ensure that uh, the heat doesn't cause it to melt. Um, the light bulb produces a lot of heat and actually can cause that, that, that probe to melt. Uh, today, as I mentioned, we're using a 75, uh, 75 watt light bulb. Uh, you could, this would be one way that you could change the experiment. You could use uh, an LED bulb, you could use different colors. Uh, as we'll talk about, different colors can influence photosynthesis, the rate of photosynthesis. So that would be a, a, something that you could look at changing or modifying uh, if you were to ex uh, extend this experiment. Um, and then lastly, um, right now, it maybe is a little hard to see through the camera, but my light bulb is pointing like this. Um, well, about like this. And so it's really pointing towards the top of the sensor. Uh, I don't really want the light to point towards the top of the center. I want the light to be able to hit the spinach loop. So I'm gonna use the box for our sensor and just prop up, prop up the light like so. And so now we've got a nice linear uh, direction that that light is pointing. And I've got everything as close as possible to this uh, thousand milliliter beaker um, that I filled up oh, pretty much all the way. Uh, the amount of water, it doesn't really matter as long as it's covering um, the area that the, the, the spinach is within the bio chamber. So I'm gonna let this sit uh, for, uh, we've got about another minute and a half, and uh, then we'll begin collecting data. So it's now been three minutes and I've got my light bulb on as you can see, and I'm all ready to set, uh, to go to collect data. So I'm gonna go ahead and do so in the Logger Pro software on my computer. And uh, as I said earlier, this will collect data for the span of 10 minutes and it will take a gas, uh, CO2 gas uh, reading every 15 seconds. And so we'll let this run and uh, then like what we've done in the past with our uh, gas pressure sensor readings on the computer. We'll look at the the, the rates, um, the slope of the line to be able to calculate a rate of change for carbon dioxide and then we can use that to be able to assess uh, how quickly uh, is this reaction of photosynthesis taking place. Now that our first condition is completed in which we've tested uh, the rate of photosynthesis with the presence of light, we're gonna now change our conditions and essentially redo the experiment, but instead of the presence of light, we're gonna actually uh, cover our bio chamber so that it has no light present. Um, and so what I'm gonna do is I'll remove the CO2 gas sensor probe and um, I'm gonna discard this spinach, and I've got a new, uh, another biochamber here ready with another six grams of spinach. And so before I plug in the sensor, I'm gonna cover this cham chamber completely with uh, tin foil so that it, it receives no light. We'll keep all the other conditions the same. We'll leave the light on. We'll have our, our beaker of water present. Um, but this time we wanna cover it up so that there's no, no light that can get into the chamber here. Too much tin foil. It's all right.
All right, so essentially we've got it set up so that the uh, same experiment is going to be done, but just in the absence of light. Um, and so we're going to be comparing these two, uh, the light and the no lights, to be able to see is there actually a difference between the rate of photosynthesis? And does anything happen uh, in the condition when, when there's no light getting to the spinach leaves? So I'll go ahead and turn this light on and uh, we're going to let it sit again for the three minutes. Uh, we got about two minutes left right now, um, a little over two minutes. So we'll start, um, we'll, we'll start recording data after that time has, uh, has passed. So now that our data is all done recording, what we'll do is uh, take the averages or, or the, the data from past year's uh, uh, experiments that students have done and we'll combine the data today uh, for the light and the dark conditions with the, the past students' data and then look at the rates of change for the carbon dioxide in that chamber to see how did the presence or absence of light influence the rate of photosynthesis to help us better understand and see really what's happening with photosynthesis.